Hi, and uh, welcome back to our read aloud from The Trouble with Antlers, aka Melvin's Rampant Rack. Today we're going to read chapter 12. Uh, if you remember, Melvin's had a bit of a difficult couple past days. So um, we are picking up after his uh, day of fleeing Amelia and then just kind of giving up in the school and deciding that if she sees him, that's fine with him because he is tired of running from her. All right, so here we go. Chapter 12, The Problem with Peacocks. Melvin was still depressed at dinner that night. Why was it all on him to make sure the human didn't discover their secrets? Why couldn't the town council have just said no? It was stupid to invite a couple humans to live here. What's the matter, darling? Aren't you enjoying the shrub stew? Melvin shrugged. It's fine, Mom. To prove it, he scooped up a spoonful and swallowed it down. Truthfully, it was delicious. His mother was an amazing cook. She did something with the bark and the shrubs, some sort of seasoning that gave it a bit of spice. He was just too busy worrying about running into Amelia outside Mr. Sloss' room every day for the rest of the year to enjoy his dinner. It would serve the town right if he just let his antlers out, let her see the truth. She was going to find out eventually. Might as well be because of him. Are you sure, sweetheart? Everything okay at school? Yeah, everything's fine. If busting his antlers out every other class and having to run from the human any time he saw her counted as fine. Everyone would blame him if she found out because of his antlers. How's the antlers situation, son? Oh, great. Now his father had joined the conversation and he wanted to talk about Melvin's antlers. Embarrassing enough to discuss the situation with his dad, but at the dinner table, in front of his mom... Melvin shrugged and didn't look up from his bowl. I heard you requested a schedule change. Jeez, was nothing sacred in this town? Everyone knew everyone else's business. It was so annoying. Even worse, because Melvin's dad had worked at the high school for years as a math teacher. When Melvin advanced to the high school, his dad had requested a transfer to the middle school, something for which Melvin would be eternally grateful. His dad really was cool that way. Still, because he'd worked at the high school for so many years, he had a ton of contacts who kept him apprised of Melvin's every move. Melvin, why did you ask for a schedule change? His mom asked. It wasn't for me. It was for the human, Amelia. I don't understand. Melvin huffed in exasperation. She's in Mr. Sloss first hour class. I'm in his second hour. You're kidding me. His dad shook his head in disbelief. I know, right? And Mrs. Husky wouldn't change her schedule. She said I'd have to change mine, but the only option meant giving up choir. I'm not giving up choir, Dad. Of course not. Melvin's mom was completely into the arts. She'd signed Melvin up for some music lessons when he was just three years old. He'd been singing and playing the piano ever since. Truthfully, Melvin enjoyed the music and he was good at it, which meant it was an easy A. He wasn't giving it up just because some human moved to town. Dad, you've got to help me. Oh, geez. Now he'd done it. What had happened to his determination to never ask his dad for advice on this situation? Clearly, he'd lost his mind. Help you with what, Melvin? His dad's eyes lit up. That was the thing about Melvin's dad. He loved problem solving. He treated everything like a mathematical equation. Every situation just a problem to be unraveled and solved. Like Melvin's antler situation would ever be so easily figured out. What's the problem? Melvin sighed. Might as well get it over with. I hate my antlers. Not exactly what he'd meant to say, but true nonetheless. Now, Melvin, they're not that bad, darling. They're a nightmare, Mom. A total nightmare. You should have married another peacock. A oh, peacock? Oh, Melvin, I would never. Your father was the most handsome bull at school. Once I met him, none of the other boys stood a chance. 
especially not the peacocks with all their strutting around and preening. Not a single thought in their heads but attracting the hens. Your father, though, he was so incredibly intelligent. She smiled at his dad. I was attracted to his brain as much as to his sexy body. Oh, Mom, gross! Ugh! The look on her face as she stared at his dad was revolting. Gross! Now we'd have to see if he could stay at Polly's tonight. No way did he want to be in the house now. Ever since he'd gotten old enough to understand what it meant when his parents were wrestling, their 2,000 square foot home just wasn't big enough for the three of them. His dad's mating Bella was just freaking disturbing. Great. Now his thoughts were going to really unhealthy places. So how am I supposed to help you again? Bless his father for his one-track mind. Just tell me how you dealt with your antlers, Dad. How did you finally gain control of them? Gain control? Melvin, what are you talking about? My antlers showing up when they're not needed. Just tell me what you did to stop the partial shifts. Partial? Melvin, I don't know how to break it to you, but I never had the issues you're having. What? Yeah, I've never heard of a moose experiencing partial shifts like this. It's just something unique to you, I guess. Unique to... Well, what makes me so dung special? Melvin, what's your language? Sorry, Mom, but come on. Why am I the one struggling with antlers popping out all over the place? Why not Dad? Why not his moose friends from high school? Why just me? Why, Melvin, haven't you figured it out yet? His mom looks surprised. Figured what out? It's because you're a peacock, darling. I'm not a peacock, I'm a moose. Yes, yes, your shifted form is that of a moose, but surely you didn't think you received no peacock traits. It doesn't work that way, sweetheart. You're as much my son as you are your father's. What does that have to do with anything? It's the peacock in you. What's the peacock in me? When I was your age, all the peacocks would strut around the school in their shifted forms, feathers flying high. It was their way of enticing the girls, you see. Not that I had eyes for them at all. All I could see was your great bull of a father. Oh, God, Mom, please, not with that again. He was so handsome. Mom, back to my problem, please. I don't understand what my antlers have to do with peacocks. It's their way, Melvin. Your mother's trying to tell you that it's the peacock in you forcing the partial shift. I didn't even know I had a peacock in me. And even if you're right, why would the peacock force my antlers out? Because you have no tail feathers to show off, dear. So your peacock has elected your antlers to serve in their place. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that all these partial shifts are because of the peacock in me, not because I'm out of control? You're in perfect control, Melvin. Your peacock wants your antlers out to impress the girls. But I don't want them out. They're not impressing anyone, Mom. Isn't there a way to make it stop happening? I really don't think so. It's just who you are, sweetheart. You have to accept that you're not just a moose. You're also a peacock. With those two animals come many varied, wonderful traits. Wonderful, my rump! Melvin! Sorry, he muttered, but this sucks. Silence fell as Melvin pondered what all this meant. He was completely dewlapped, and Polly was right. I really would have had feathers sprouting from my rump. Here's a picture of Melvin at the dinner table with his parents. Melvin is clearly quite disgusted by his mother's continued infatuation with his father. So, yeah. Melvin stared at the ceiling and tried to ignore Polly's snickers from above. 
The bunks they sprawled across were in an L shape, so Polly's top bunk was against one wall, while Melvin's lower bunk was against another. Any minute now, Polly would swing his head over the rail to continue the conversation. It wouldn't happen until he was done laughing, though. So your antlers are going to be impressing girls your entire life, life? Polly's words were garbled. He was laughing so hard. Still, Melvin understood exactly what he'd said. Unfortunately, yes. He suddenly had a vision of himself as a crotchety old moose man, 93 years old, stooped over and walking with a cane. He'd be on the sidewalk of their town and a young woman would brush by and BAM! Antler hell at 93. Shameful! His entire life was going to be a series of humiliating events and there was nothing he could do about it. So what's the plan, Melvin? Polly swung his head over the side of the bunk and stared at him, just as Melvin had predicted. You're going to see Amelia in the morning. Only if Mr. Sloth releases class late. Polly just stared at him. Melvin huffed. Yeah, I know. It's a miracle when he doesn't keep us past the bell. So what's your plan? I don't have one. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I should just go to Sloth's class late every day. Not a good idea. I know, but what else can I do? Well, what did you do to keep your antlers from showing up when Amelia found you in the woods? Nothing. Not really. I mean, I'd already shifted a lot of times that day, and I just got stuck. I couldn't shift back. That's it, man. Polly jumped down from the top bunk. That's your solution solution. What are you talking about? Melvin sat up. Shift over and over again before school until you can't shift anymore. That would work right, right, right. I don't know, maybe. Well, we should try tomorrow. It'll be an experiment. Melvin nodded. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. If it worked, then he could actually have a civil conversation with Amelia. Maybe even get to know her. How many times do you think it'll take? I'm not sure. I guess I'll just play it by ear. Polly climbed back up to the top bunk. We'll get up early, shift a bunch of times. This is going to be great, great man. Melvin wasn't sure great was the right word. He didn't really like the idea of not being able to shift when he wanted to. It felt like he'd be crippling his moose. On the other hand, attending classes even one day without worrying about the unexpected appearances of his rampant rack sounded absolutely wonderful. All right, well, they've got a plan. I'm curious to see how that all works out. All right, well, thanks for joining me for today's Read Aloud. Uh, feel free to check out my books on the website, on my website. And, you know, I'll see you here tomorrow for Chapter 12. Have a good one. Bye.